Winning the war against insurgency begins with the will to conquer. In a display of this, the service chiefs have reaffirmed their unwavering determination to end the scourge of banditry that has plagued the country. Speaking after the meeting of security chiefs at the defense headquarters in Abuja, the chief of defense staff, General Christopher Musa, expressed anger at the 30 million naira ransom imposed by bandit kingpin Bela Tulji on residents of Zamfara community. While noting that days of Tulji are numbered, General Musa urged Nigerians to cooperate with security agencies to ensure safety of lives and property. Ike, you know a lot about Nigerian military, but the service chiefs mm. once again assuring Nigerians that, hey, we have the ability to win this war against banditry. How assuring is this? If they tweak some of their methods, if they listen to some of the advice that we've given them over the years, if you watch my interview with the Chief of Defense Staff mm. some months back, in his opening remarks, he said, we always watch your program because you always advise us in the right way about what to do. You are very objective and all that. We will not change. I'm talking about myself and everyone now okay. uh, connected to this. We will not change. We have always said, look, look at your methods. Look at your tactics. If it's not working, you have to tweak it. It's only a madman that will say, okay, I, this, I must stick to this method, and even if it's not different. delivering the, uh, the goods. Mm. And they shouldn't be overly excited about the gains that they've made. They should be more focused on organic progress, progress that we can see, that we can relate with. Okay. Yes, because sometimes when they talk about, oh, we killed so so number of people, we are not in position to verify whether that happened. How many times have we had the privilege of uh, joining the armed forces in uh, assessing post-operation, post -operation, okay. uh, um, uh, doing post-operation evaluation of the scene? Okay. Of a, of a military campaign. It doesn't matter how many times how many people have had that privilege. Okay. So you cannot know, you cannot um, validate some of those things. So we just take what they say. We take uh, what they say. But I had the chief of defense staff say that they are going to harmonize their efforts this time in terms of because in that, in the Northwest, for example, where we have been embarrassed by bandits, mm. we have different military campaigns, codenamed, uh, given different names. There is Operation Hadarindaji. Operation Hadarindaji. Uh, Operation Wellstroke. Uh, we have um, um, different um, mm. names that we've given those operations. It's now saying, okay, we are going to fuse those operations. Let's, let's do that. Let's concentrate more troops in the areas that are problematic. Let's send more troops there. Our best, like the um, special forces, for example. This leadership of the service chief, they've done something. They identified some very good commanders. Those who had served in the main theater of war, which is uh, Bono State, and they've given them leadership positions, you know, they've made them commanders in some of these key battlegrounds. It's a very good thing because you are now, you are now entrusting responsibility to tested and trusted people. Because so, let me come in here. You talked about <coughs> organization. Mm. I didn't care. Well, stroke. No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't care. It's different. It's not part of now, what they are bringing together. Oh, okay. Had in Daji mm. and well, stroke. Bringing them together. Why did it take so long? And also, what difference will this bring? I think they coined it Fasanyama. 
I don't know. I hope I'm getting the house out name right. But you are not bring, pronouncing it right. It sounds like something is. Okay, but bringing this thing to what difference will it now make? No, until we see, we'll give them time. Let's see uh, whether it's going to work. I'm happy that the chief of defense staff, who has the responsibility mm. of coordinating military campaign, okay. incorporating all the services. That is his responsibility. All of our training institutions, they are under him. Mm. And when there is a military campaign involving all the services, okay. he is the person who sits as coordinator. That's his responsibility, you know, okay. as the uh, boss of the service chiefs. So when there is okay. a general now, um, military campaign involving all the services, he steps in to coordinate okay. and ensure that everything is successful. And he had been in uh, Bono State. It was during his time hmm. that we saw Boko Haram beginning to re, re, uh, surrender. So hmm. he knows okay. a lot about what we are talking about. Hmm. But until we see the uh, the implementation of his, hmm. his plan okay. to fuse this ops together. Yes, these operations together mm. and give it time. We won't be able to uh, know whether at this stage, whether it's a, a good decision. Mm. Don't also forget some of those battlegrounds. You have no means of communicating. When the, the school boys from Kaduna were seized, it was the next day that okay. the army even got to know because there is no means of communication, of communication. no network. And the next military formation to them mm. is about 40 minutes away. So okay. they just took them to the bush. It was the next day that the military got to know that it had happened. So by that time, those boys had gone. Even okay. Chibok, the, Chibok uh, was late in the night. Emeka, Emeka, the, is, the C, is the chief of defense staff not raising the hopes here? You know, saying that, oh, we are going to capture Belo Turiji. And if you remember, the village has actually levied this Zamfara residence of 30 million. Is he not raising hopes here? He has to. That's his work. He has to it, raise it is hopes. over to raise the hopes and yeah, now dash it. Yeah, well, I, I, just, I believe that having been within, you know, having got uh, some cognitive experience from handling, from, you know, actually being on the ground in some of these areas, uh, I want to believe it's not merely raising hopes, that there is reason to be hopeful in the hope he is raising. Mm. You know, I want to believe that, you know. But I also want to just I want to add that. He's setting a target for himself. Yes. He's setting a target. Yes. But Nigerians can give him a timeline. Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yeah, and, and I also hope they will not just look at, they will not just look at the insurgents in those areas. But also look at how some of these people are moving to us, to other parts of the world, even especially in the south, mm. where you have where kidnapping is still a major problem. You know, to deal with those things. Yes, oil theft, they have really done. I can I mean, personally talk, commend them. Yeah. You know, because I know about the case. You know, even though it took some time for them to respond, but when they responded, it was really. I mean, it was impactful. They they cleared those oil thieves away. From that area, so they are, they are doing well. But the thing is that they must ensure that all those who aid these criminals, all those who aid these characters, that whether they are traditional rulers, whatever they are, you know, they are effectively the CDS. He talked it. about local imputes of uh, that is fueling this bandits' activity. That the question now is. You wonder why is it that why the people trusting the bandits more than the security? It's not about trusting. Do they have the weapons to confront the bandits? That is one. Two. What well, like, for the bandits? No, like for said, the information and all of it. You see, the, the bandits are more mobile than the security agencies. See, a station where uh, pupils were kidnapped from school, 40 minutes away from the nearest military base. Okay. You can imagine that these people, okay. they, you know, they, 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 they study the loopholes. Unless we have 
a, it will develop a, a means of you know communication for the armed forces. Mm. You know that is outside okay. of okay. outside of our you know <laughs> outside of the telephony we use right now. Unless we can develop it, if the armed forces themselves can actually even develop something like that, it will be useful. Okay. So that you know it will be easy for them you know to engage in interdiction you know and then also infiltrate all those groups okay. to ensure that they can but they need to okay. deal with this even the even not just insurgency or banditry they should look at kidnapping they should look at some of these things all right make some of these other crimes too. all right make enough of talking insecurity and yeah.